Hi there, it's Noreen. And today I am excited to share some ideas with you about storytelling and what kinds of prop to use and how to set them up. So you'll be able to use those props and those ideas for the stories in Sophie and Max, for the stories you make up on your own, or even to bring your child's favorite storybook to life. So for example, where is it? This week in my classes, we did the story of the owl babies. And instead of reading the book, I put up this little setup, and we'll get back to that in a moment later, and just use the set to tell the story. And it's a very different experience. So know that you, know, you can use this in many different ways. But before I share some ideas with you and some props that I have, I want to remind you of one thing, and that is to not aim for perfection. So you're already giving your child a wonderful experience by sharing stories with them in whatever format. Adding props to that experience is just like adding another layer. You're not starting from scratch in trying to create this whole new storytelling experience. That can seem a little bit overwhelming, especially when you've seen you know, professionals that are just excellent at telling stories. I'm not even there yet. So definitely just remember to just, you're adding a layer and it doesn't take much. So just take it one step at a time and don't overwhelm yourself. And this is coming from a perfectionist. So I have to remind myself of that all the time as well. All right, now to get started. Our first layer will always be or most likely be the main character. And for the main character, you have lots and lots of possibilities. So I'm going to show you a few that I use. One of my favorite ones for, you know, people in the story are peg dolls. And I have two here that I use a lot in my classes, especially with the younger kids. They are Rimple and Dimple. And they come to class a lot. And the kids really love them and get excited when they come out. And as you can see, they're just simple peg people painted them a little bit, an acorn cap for a hat, and that's all you need. And, you know, here we even have some, he's often the farmer, <laughs> but he just has an acorn cap, and that's all you need. Let's see, what other props do we have? Oh, so for animals, you know, I have these lovely wooden animals. I believe they are Ostheimer. And then we also have these uh, Schleich animals, which are wonderful. My kids have quite a few of those. And they're great for playing and they're great for storytelling. So whatever animals your child might have in whatever form or dinosaurs, you know, those can all become part of the story. It's, and when I don't have the right animals, I just make little puppets. So these are little finger puppets that I just found online. They were just a printout and I glued them together and they were ready to go. Let's put you in the front too. And let's see what else. Or stuffed animals. Here's a little butterfly from my kids. It's a little finger puppet as well, but a lot of times I also use small stuffed animals and make them part of the story. Or here's a fairy from my daughter. So they sometimes show up and oh, and these two. Sometimes the main character is not an animal or a person, but it's a pumpkin, like in our impatient pumpkin story in the October issue. So this is one I knitted. If you don't need to knit, don't know how to knit, not a problem. You know, you can just use um, a paper printout and incorporate that in the story. Then we also have Sally the snail. I forget what issue she's from. I think it's from the spring. And then this guy I knitted the other day. He's supposed to be a woolly bear, a caterpillar, and you know, I, I was gonna use just, I was gonna just draw him on a piece of paper, but then I thought, oh, it's be fun to knit and easy enough. And the kids were going crazy over this little guy. So if you know how to knit, sometimes it's very easy to create little characters. Now, if you are if you don't have any of these kinds of props, you can always go online or draw it yourself. Just make a picture of it. 
there's only one challenge with the picture is that, you know, once you cut it out, it doesn't stand up. Sometimes it's okay to lay it down, but if you want it to stand up, what you can do is you can take any kind of block, or I've used corks before, and just tape your character onto it. And then you can move it around, just like any other character. So that's always handy when you don't have the exact animal or person or pumpkin. Okay, so that's for characters. I'm going to move these guys over so we can make room for other things. Once you have the characters in place, you can start to think about, you know, what might be, what else might be part of the story, such as a lot of times we have, our stories take place on a farm. So we have a barn, which I don't have right now, but we have a simple wooden barn. We also have these simple houses. Again, you might, you probably have your own set of houses or just blocks. These I use a lot and they can really become almost anything. You know, they can be a simple house. It can be a bed. It can be a wall. We have smaller ones too. These I love. I use them often for fences or small walls. They are just little planks from Ikea. They were there were like a hundred in a box and for ten dollars so this is a great resource they're great for playing but also great for setting up little sceneries and little sets so let's see what else oh we have my kids have these castle blocks i don't use them too often when i tell stories in my classes but my kids love playing with them and just make up stories as they build their castles which is always fun to listen into. And then we also have these blocks, which are cut from branches. This is from one of our big sycamore trees. And they are very versatile too. Sometimes I stack them up and just say, that's a big tree, or I'll put one of the small pine trees. Where is it? Small pine trees on top of it, and it's just, it becomes a tall pine tree. Or they are tables or mountains. So for mountains or little hills, I simply place them under the fabric I'm using and it elevates it and suddenly you have a mountain. And we'll get to fabrics in a second, but I wanted to see, oh, and we also have get these, these rainbows, which again are so versatile. Um, let me think, what do I use them for? Oh, so sometimes I stack them up like that and drape fabric over it and it becomes a little cave. Or we also use this lovely cave here, which is in the January issue. And again, I've used it for so many stories. It's so simple. And I really love using props that we can make ourselves because then we can really do it the way we like. And but back to these for a second. If you look back here, pull this a little bit closer. And you see the owl nest? It is simply one of these draped in some fabric that I had. So once you really get going with it, suddenly the ideas start coming and it's really fun to create all these little scenes. Okay, let's see, what else do we have? Oh, let me talk a little bit more about trees because a lot of our stories take place in nature. And so we often have trees or bushes. And when I can, I try to use real props. So a branch from a tree with some leaves on it or some kind of little plant or a flower or some grass. Or in the owl story, I have this piece of ivy that I just plucked from our backyard. And, but when you don't have real trees, you can also make your own. So I sh already showed you these little wooden ones, which I really like. They're adorable for playing and they always go well in the stories. But we also have these from, is it the September issue? I believe when we're talking about apples. So we use these little trees. We have a few different ones that I use in the stories. And then the other day, my son 
was up in his room very quietly working away and then he showed me his apple tree and he was so proud of it and now he's been playing with it almost every day and telling little stories about the apple and how the apple tree just wanted a star of its own so it's again when you use simple things that you can make yourself it makes it so much easier for the kids to start their own projects and bring their own ideas to life okay trees oh and another tree we often use are pine cones now sometimes they stand up on their own pretty well if they don't i've also put them in little terracotta pots or we've glued them onto a little wooden disc if we wanted to have them around for longer so again as you can see lots of ideas and oh and this one i wanted to show you and this is one i use in the spring a lot it's a little nest just out of a paper bag and then sometimes it's empty a lot sometimes you know we put little grasses and mosses in and then the birds can hang out and oh and these we use a lot oh a little bit heavy all right so here we have a box full of chestnuts i love chestnuts they are one of my favorite nuts in the fall to collect so with these what we do is a lot of times we make little paths and just line them up to create a path or we use rocks of various sizes sometimes we have a big rock whoops big rock that becomes a mountain that somebody climbs up on or what else have we used seashells are great acorns really whatever you can find and have on hand okay now oh one more thing i just remembered i wanted to show you this character so our little owls i love making these they're just toilet paper rolls you bend in the top to make the ears and then we glue little feathers on when the kids make them we i always have them paint them so they end up looking really colorful in the end you just add some eyes here i have them drawn on but you can also um, glue them on and wait a minute i believe that is in the october issue so yeah check out the october issue these are really fun to make and fun to play with or use as decoration so we have all that covered all right now let's talk about fabrics as you can see i have this green play silk here and they are from my daughter but I often borrow them for storytelling because they are very lovely now if you don't have play silks don't worry there are many many other options so let me show you oh back here this is just some brown fabric that I had and I sewed it up into two big pieces just hemmed it on the side so I use that a lot, especially for woody stories that take place in a forest. Then this obviously is grass. And then for the winter time, I have this white felt here that I use. And it's just from the fabric store, just a piece of felt. So super easy. You could use, you know, green and brown as well and just have a few different felt um, you know, fabric. Oh, oh, and here is another idea. This is one of my son's t-shirts. So if you don't have anything on hand, look in your closet or your child's closet. And sometimes, you know, just a simple t-shirt can do the trick. And I know with my kids, they get so silly when I realize that I'm using something that normally we would not use for storytelling but they just they love it so feel free to get creative and think outside the box what else do we have here oh just a white blanket again great for the winter and then here we just have a white cloth napkin again great for making snow scenes or draping over like these arches that we have to make a snowy mountain and then one thing I also like to do is, so especially for my classes, I will set up the story like you see back here, and then I will drape a uh, 
place silk over it. So as the kids come, they know something is underneath it, but they can't quite see it. So it's always very exciting once I reveal the story. Yeah, it's a nice effect, like the curtain open, opening in a theater. You know, again, not something you have to do, but it just adds a little bit of magic every now and then. Okay, let's see, what else? Let me check my notes here. We've covered that, blocks we've done. Oh, and yeah, just here's some more props. This is play food from my kid's play kitchen. And then we have a tractor. So really, there's there are no limits as to what you can use. Just start looking around, go through your kids' toys, look around what you have, you know, even in your kitchen or your closet or outside. Because out, I love doing storytelling outside because so much of the scenery is already there. You know, telling a story by the, you know, by a tree at the bottom of a tree and all these cool roots and you can do all kinds of fun stuff or in grass or in the garden. So really just think outside the box. It's, it's fun once you get started. I love setting up stories these days and coming up with new setups. So I hope this was helpful and gave you some ideas on what to do. Again, don't try to perfect it. Just take it one step at a time and you know have fun with it. See how your kids react. They might even have some cool ideas on what to use and bring their own props to the story. So yeah, have fun and please feel free to share, you know, what sort of setups you come up with, snap a picture and I'd be, I'd love to see it. And then, you know, if you're okay with it, also share it with other parents to inspire them. All right, that's it for today and I will talk to you later.